Welcome to the Nexus IMU Tutorials. This session is on the IMU Research app. IMU Research is a free-to-use app that can be downloaded and installed on any iOS device. This app allows a user to collect data directly to the iOS device or save data directly to the onboard sensor memory. The app is intuitive, easy to use, and convenient as captures can be initiated on the go within minutes from a user's mobile phone. This means that collecting data in Vivo has never been easier and more accessible. To download and install the IMU Research app, click on the App Store and search for IMU Research or iMeasureU. Click on IMU Research and then click Get where this interface currently says Open. After confirming your credentials and downloading, click on Open which I will do here. When you first open the app, you will see two main sections. The left side displays all of your sessions, while the right side will show all trials within that session. The right hand side will also serve as the main interface during data collection, as we will see later in this video. To start collecting data, you must make sure to have a session. To create a new session, click on the plus icon at the top. You will be prompted to enter in a session name. I will type in IMU Research Tutorial. You also have the option to take a photo using your device's camera so that you can easily identify your session within the list on the left. When satisfied, click Use Photo and then click Done. Now highlight the session you want to use. Click New Trial at the bottom and then at the top you will be prompted to enter a trial name. I will type in Trial 1. Below you will have two options for how you want to collect your data. I have summarized these options on the right to help you choose which mode is best suited for your application. Stream will send data directly to the iOS device via Bluetooth. The data can then be exported from the iOS device via email or through iTunes. Synchronized data can be recorded at 500 Hz for three axes and 100 Hz for nine axes. As such, the typical use case is for lab or classroom settings where the sensors and iOS device are in close proximity or where instant information is required. In contrast, onboard captures data directly to the onboard sensor memory. The data must be extracted via the Lightning Desktop app, which will be discussed later in this video. Up to eight sensors can be supported for three axes at 1000 Hz or nine axes at 500 Hz across two active trials. Synchronization is handled by relaying information to the app whenever the sensors are in close proximity to the iOS device. This capture mode is best used when high frequencies are required or the sensor proximity is too large for a reliable and constant capture. In this first example, I will select Stream and choose to record only three axes. I will then click on Start Capture. The app will prompt you to now select the sensors you want to use. If you do not see any sensors in the list, make sure that the Bluetooth has been enabled on your iOS device and that the sensors have been turned on. Each sensor will not only show its unique identifier in the form of its serial number, but will show its current firmware version, the remaining battery life, and its overall signal strength. When selecting a sensor, you can drag it to the left and rename it to help identify the location of each sensor. So I'll go ahead and swipe 2376 to the left and rename it as left leg. 1. And then do the same thing for 2429 and rename it right leg 1. I'm going to select both of them and then click OK. Remember you can choose up to four sensors when streaming data. As soon as I click OK, the sensors begin to configure themselves and this sets up the synchronization of the sensors. When this process is complete, data begins immediately streaming from all the sensors to the iOS device. When you wish to stop the stream, click Stop Capture. The app will prompt you to confirm this request, so click Stop Capture once again. The sensors will again reconfigure and then you will be brought back to the home screen. To manage the trial, swipe left on the trial name. You will have two options, either to export or delete the trial. 
If you choose to export, you will be presented with a menu of options. The easiest and most straightforward export option would be to send yourself an email. Just remember that if you are choosing this option, you must have a pre-configured email on your iOS device. So I will go ahead and click on Mail. I will type in my email. And you will notice a zip version of the trial has been attached to the body of the email. I will then click Send. You can also access the data by plugging in your iOS device into a PC or Mac and using iTunes. Within iTunes, click on the device icon, and under Settings, click Apps. Scroll all the way down to File Sharing and click on IMU Research. This will show all trials stored on the iOS device. I can see that I have mine from IMU Research Tutorial, so I will highlight it and click Save To in the bottom right corner. I will specify the location and click Select Folder. When opening the trial folder, you will see a CSV file for each sensor. Each CSV file is identified by the session name, IMU Research Tutorial, the trial name, Trial 1, and the sensor name specified in the app, in this case, Left Leg 1 and Right Leg 1. If we open up the trial, we will see timestamp information and accelerometer data for the X, Y, and Z components. In this next example, I will choose to save data to the onboard sensor memory and record nine axes. I will click on New Trial, specify a trial name, in this case, Trial 2, select Onboard and nine axes, and then click Start Capture. I will once again be pr prompted to select the sensors I want to use, so I will select Left Leg 1 and Right Leg 1 from before. And as soon as I click OK, synchronization information is being sent to the iOS device. When the sensor configuration is complete, data immediately begins recording to the internal sensor memory. This will bring me to a new screen with a start and stop button. These buttons allow a user to set epochs or a region of interest within the trial. Before hitting start, remember that you can record two trials concurrently when saving data on board. So you could click back on the session folder and go through the same steps just shown to set up a new trial. I will go ahead and click on the trial name and then click start to begin my region of interest. Your subject can now begin performing the activity of interest and is not confined to the capture volume. With that said, the more time the subject remains in proximity of the iOS device, more data points can be used in the sensor synchronization. When ready to end the region of interest, click Stop. If I click on the session, you will see that data is still being stored to the onboard sensor memory for this trial. In order to stop recording, re-enter the trial and click Stop Capture. You will be prompted again to confirm, so click Stop Capture. Extracting data from the onboard sensor memory consists of two components. The first is to extract the sync file from the iOS device. Swipe left on the trial and click Export. As before, you have many options including to save from iTunes, but I will send it via email in this example. So I will go ahead and enter in my email and then click send. The second component requires the data from the sensor to be downloaded using the Lightning Desktop app. This app can be obtained from the downloads page on the Vicon website. Please ensure your computer meets the minimum requirements and that you download and install the necessary drivers for communication with the sensors. The Lightning Desktop app can support up to two sensors at a single time. Before plugging in a sensor to your computer using the micro USB cable, make sure that it has been turned on. When plugged in, the sensors will populate automatically in this app. So we will have 2429 for the right leg and 2376 for the left leg. Within each sensor, we can see that we have a preview of the data collected down below. To download this data, you will need to do two things. The first is to select a sync file. I will navigate to the folder location where I saved the previously emailed sync file. Knowing that 2376 corresponds to the left leg, I will go ahead and select the correct sync file. Next, I need to select a region to download. I can either choose to select all and download the entire trial. I can then use the sync file to extract the region of interest chosen during collection. So 0 is the beginning and 1 is the end of that region of interest. I can then use the timestamps to extract only that region from the downloaded trial. Alternatively, if I clear all, I can 
add a region, and then manipulate its bounds manually. Once the region has been set, I can go ahead and click download. I will then need to specify its download location. I will choose the IMU research folder that I created earlier and give it a custom file name of left leg. Click save and then wait for it to download. I will open up that folder location, double click on the downloaded CSV file, and now you can see that I've got data for the nine axes for the region of interest specified within the Lightning app. To review, this video first examined how you can install the IMU Research app on your iOS device. It then presented how you can set up a data collection. This included a detailed summary of the two collection modes, stream and onboard, and provided insight on how you might choose the correct mode based on your application. It also showed how you could access individual sensor information, including being able to rename each sensor. An example of streaming data to the iOS device and collecting data to the onboard sensor memory was then presented. This included showing how you might set up a region of interest within your trial for further analysis. Finally, this video showed how you can extract the sensor data directly from the iOS device, or iTunes, for stream data, and how you can use the Lightning Desktop app to download the onboard data. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at